Hi, my name is Andrea Capere, and you're watching Mission Nonprofit. Each month, we connect with local organizations and agencies that are making a positive impact in our communities. Downtown Olympia will soon receive a new resource for those experiencing homelessness. We're speaking with TJ LaRock, manager of the Providence Community Care Center and the importance of their work. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us about the Community Care Center. Well, the Community Care Center is going to be a um, single uh, point of access for multiple different types of services for um, people who are going through experiencing homelessness and may um, have substance use issues or have uh, mental health issues or need access to primary care um, and that kind of thing. So. Uh, I spent about six years um, working in the management in management at uh, Providence in behavioral health, and I managed our inpatient unit, and then later our crisis services um, in the emergency department. And our foundation president um, came to me about three years ago and said that the foundation uh, board was very interested in funding um, something to help um, with mental health. Uh, and they particularly wanted to target um, a lot of what they saw in the downtown Olympia area, um, people who did not seem to be getting access to services. Um, and if they were getting access to services, they weren't staying enrolled in those services long term, particularly uh, the crowd that uh, of, of homeless individuals that are um, present in the downtown town area. So uh, I thought that was an excellent idea, especially having seen so many people um, come through our emergency department who may not have um, been at the level of crisis um, where they needed an inpatient mental health bed or inpatient substance use treatment, but we're going through a lot of challenges in their lives um, and we're currently homeless. And we would send them back out after giving them referrals of where to go and, and, and making sure they weren't in crisis, uh, but they'd have to access that system on their own. Um, so what I did at that point was go out into the community and I tried to connect with as many uh, service providers, people who work directly with this population, um, to find out why they thought um, people weren't accessing services and what, what the challenges were. And essentially three things um, were kind of consistent. I spoke to people um, really throughout the community, people with others um, in other social service areas, people um, who were uh, in the emergency medical field, um, the police officers, business owners, but really as many people um, and hear as many voices as I could um, to find out what those struggles were, why people weren't accessing services, um, and why we were um, kind of as a system failing these certain individuals and, and seemingly the ones who needed the care the most. So um, what the, the three themes were that came about from that were, um, the first of those was uh, a rather simple one. The first was that at the time it was taking around two months uh, in our community to get access to a, a mental health provider, uh, so to, to get access to someone who can prescribe medications. It could take up to two months. Um, we're a little bit better about that right now in the community, but we have had our struggles over the last handful of years. Um, the second thing, uh, which was, was really, um, unique and interesting, and this is somewhat unique to our community, but um, the housing services and the and all of the healthcare services were, um, all the policy was developed and all the services were um, implemented completely separate from one another. And really, if you, if you think about that, if you're trying to um, house somebody, but they don't have access to adequate mental health services, substance use services, or just any kind of physical health care, um, the likelihood of them staying housed is pretty low. And if you're trying to help someone with their, uh, what's going on with their mental health, uh, their substance use, or um, even their physical care, and they're, on, they're not housed, they're, they're, they're living um, homeless, uh, the, like, the efficacy of those services just really falls off a cliff. You're not going to be able to provide very quality services. And so one of the things that just became very apparent right away is that we needed to find a way in our community to combine the efforts of housing individuals at the same time we're trying to connect them to social services. Um, and then the third, the third piece really was that we have a lot of great resources in our community, um, but unfortunately they're really challenging to access. Uh, each, each place an individual has to go to get a different service, they have to do the equivalent of filing their taxes, you know, that much paperwork. And if you, and you may or may not get access to that service immediately. It may take months to get full access to that service or to have a housing unit become available. So an individual will go and if they don't have any means of transportation, they're homeless, 
they have to they spend an entire day going to get to access one of those services uh, and then there's not a lot of communication between service providers so really we immediately um, the the first few people I spoke to we started a group where we have a vulnerability index meeting um, and so it's it's a group of providers it started out with three of us meeting every Friday um, and now there are over 35 people and um, these these provider groups will all be located at the community care center where we can staff and talk about individuals and um, figure out what they're wanting to get access to and how we can help accomplish that goal working collectively as opposed to just each agency doing their piece separately. So for someone walking in the door, uh, what are they going to experience as someone who's uh, coming in for the first time? What resources can they access? Sure. Well, one of the great parts is just walking through the door. Um, the person, a lot of times people are resistant to jumping right into getting access to mental health care or substance use treatment. They're just not ready at that point in their life to get access to that, to those, those um, resources. And they may have had experiences where they, they don't trust that system, um, and, and that makes sense. Um, so what we are offering there is uh, just anyone can come in off the street. We have access to showers, restrooms, laundry services, uh, and coffee, and kind of just an area with different activities so that people are able to come in and start to build trust and build relationships with, with different care providers. And then when they're ready, we can take them from that environment back to, to another portion of the building that has exam rooms, consult space, and start getting them uh, access to the services they need. Uh, but we can also address things very quickly, like if they have a wound, the Olympia Free Clinic will be doing a wound care clinic there at least once a week where they can get access to getting treatment for that wound. Um, and if somebody is ready to access the service the minute they walk through the door, we'll be ready as well to help them to, um, through that process. Some of the largest obstacles people have to care is they're not enrolled in health insurance. They may not have an ID card of any kind or their social security card. Um, and so we're gonna help them through those processes as well uh, so that they are ready to, to get access to services um, you know, a little bit sooner. Uh, and so basically we're creating a really safe environment where they will feel comfortable coming in um, and connecting to people. And then once they're connected to those people, those people will help them connect to resources. And I think that's the big difference. Um, and what will be great is that we have 10 different organizations um, that will all have services in, on site, along with a number of other service agencies that we're really closely working with that will be off site so that we can connect people to anything that we might not be able to offer in the building. Uh, eventually, for example, job services and opportunities around education. So those are something I'd like to add down the line, but we want to kind of get some of the basics of just health and, and housing um, kind of on board first, uh, and then we'll be able to add other services uh, in the future. So you work for Providence. Tell us about the role that Providence has played in creating this community care center. Sure. So. Um, Providence has played several roles and will continue to play several roles in this. Uh, but the first piece is really that our foundation um, board was the catalyst for this whole project. They were the ones who approached um, me and asked, uh, you know, our behavioral health department what what service we might be able to add to the community. And they they kind of identified what problem area that they were trying to address. And so that really took us outside of our normal practice of being um, inpatient or traditional mental health um, service providers and and put us into this world where we're um, partnering with different uh, people who have traditionally worked with the homeless population and tried to get uh, access to services early on. So uh, that, and they kind of allowed us to be the catalyst um, to, to go out and create these partnerships with all the other agencies. So that's the biggest piece. The second is that the foundation is, um, Providence Foundation is our largest funding partner. Um, and they have um, given us the, the majority of the, the, um, the funds for this project. Although we've also had um, really generous donations from Capital Medical Center, um, as well as uh, the city of Olympia gave us some of their um, federal block grant um, for, for helping with construction. So um, those were our biggest partners. Um, the, the BHO, um, Behavioral Health Organization, is also reimbursing a lot of the services that will be provided in the, in the facility. Um, but we, able to, we were able to have that um, level of, of involvement, um, and then we've been kind of coordinating and doing the entire construction project. Uh, and once we open, um, we will have a nurse practitioner who will be on site, who will be able to do bridge medication management for individuals with, uh, with mental health uh, needs um, around medications, and basically be able to do that while we're enrolling them and getting them into long-term service. 
We'll also have intensive case managers on site who will be able to work with people um, really at the point when they're needing the most amount of services and helping them connect to those services and get to that point where they're able to be in more traditional um, behavioral health uh, services. So uh, those are the two main things that we're going to have on site. I will also be at the facility um, uh, managing um, the my team, but also the, the facility at large. So, um, yeah. This sounds like a great uh, resource for an entire community, but can you mm -hmm. tell us a little more about some of the unique challenges that those experiencing homelessness face in Thurston County in particular? Yeah, um, there's a, there's kind of a handful of things that, that make it challenging um, specific to our county. The, the first um, really was in a way that we have uh, historically um, Gone, looked at housing and health care as two very separate issues and so we've addressed them separately um, and they need to be paired together when a person is um, is homeless. Um, so that was one of the biggest uh, things. We do have um, a handful of um, regulations and, and things on the books, in the, especially in the city of Olympia, uh, that make it challenging for um, homeless individuals to find uh, any place to be or any place to be able to be uh, not kind of pushed on to the next spot. Um, and I think our I think that's cha the mindset uh, around local government is really changing and seeing that those things need to be addressed differently and that we really need to put um, resources uh, into this this area. Um, but also, uh, I'm sorry. Um, also, we apologize. Uh, we also. Um, sorry, I'm completely. It's okay. Possible? It's okay. okay. We are. You're good at editing. Doing... Yeah, we also. Yeah, I'm just, there was a point that I really wanted to make and I'm forgetting what it was. Where were you? You were talking about um, local government and challenges with yes. uh, uh, legislation making it difficult for people to find space to oh, yes. exist. Um, and then, but there was, hold on just a second. Oh, okay. Um, we also have a uh, really overall shortage of shelter beds um, in our community, and um, we struggle each year um, to uh, deal with that, particularly in the winter when the weather is more severe. Um, and we also have challenges around um, places for people to be during the day. The last two years, one of our partners, Interfaith Works, has um, run a warming center that I've actually worked a 12-hour shift at uh, each, each week in order to really um, feel uh, immersed with this um, this type of work so that we're ready when we when we open our doors um, but there's not consistent funding for that type of a project and so every year we're kind of um, going after scraps around funding and trying to get that um, connected to those those resources so people just quite simply don't have a place to be we don't have enough shelter beds and and of the beds that we do have um, they're not always the best fit with the people that we're trying to serve. Um, the Interfaith Works Shelter is a wonderful example of a low barrier shelter that will really target taking the people who need that, that shelter service the most. Historically, a lot of the shelter system that's out there will rule people out of services because they're too physically ill or they have too um, many challenges with their behavior or too many challenges with, with drug use. Um, and the Interfaith Works is kind of the opposite in looking at trying to address um, taking those people on first. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have enough of that type of bed in our community. And so there are a lot of people who, who sleep unsheltered um, all through the year and all through the winter. Um, and we have no camping ordinances in, in, in Olympia, so there's not a lot of safe places to do that. And so there's constantly people moving. So those are some of the challenges that they really face. I do think that local um, government and jurisdictions are really working more cooperatively with service providers and looking at um, plans for solutions. Uh, the city of Olympia has really made some strides recently uh, in, in helping support a lot of these projects, including the community care center. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that we're, we're headed in the right direction though. Well, it's a big problem and it requires the cooperation of not only the 10 agencies and Providence, but also those in our community. And I'm sure that there are people watching that would love to know, how can I help? Are there opportunities to volunteer or donate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're trying to really funnel all of our, our um, volunteer opportunities through a couple of organizations. Um, this is kind of a challenge because there's so many organizations that if we all brought volunteers, we wouldn't necessarily ensure that everyone had a appropriate training and um, felt ready and safe to be in this environment. So we are looking for anyone who has any kind of medical background like nursing or as a doctor or nurse practitioner. Um, we we uh, 
ask them to go to the Olympia Free Clinic um, and, and volunteer there. And you can specifically say, I'd like to be involved with one of your rotations at the community care center. If you don't have that kind of a background and you just want to roll up your sleeves and, and help us out, um, we're funneling that volunteer effort through Interfaith Works and through Sidewalk. Um, those are two organizations here in town um, that we're going to be providing a single training um, dependent on what uh, people will do in the building. So we'll have anything from sidewalk volunteers who um, do some amazing work where they're actually navigating and going through that entire process with someone and helping getting them housed to more of a hospitality volunteer who would be at the community care center um, helping with coffee, helping with people with showers, um, th those types of things. And so there's, there's going to be a, a wide array of volunteer opportunities. But my suggestion is that people go to Interfaith Works um, or Sidewalk or the Olympia Free Clinic um, to access um, volunteer opportunities. Great. And Thank we will have all of those um, websites up on our website shortly so that people can have that link to that volunteer piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with just a couple minutes left, tell us where the Community Care Center is located, sure. when it opens, and how we can find out more. Absolutely. So um, the Community Care Center is located at 225 State Avenue, which is downtown Olympia. It's in a great location because it's directly across the street from the um, downtown transit center, uh, which really helps us with um, getting to other service providers. Um, and uh, we will be, our grand opening is on September 6th, so that is the, at 5 p.m., and that is uh, open to the public, and so anyone that would like to be there to celebrate us, our opening, um, we encourage folks to show up. Um, we will actually open the door for services the following uh, week on September 13th, so that's when we'll be opening. And um, to find out more information, um, we did make it kind of easy for our, our website, so it's prov, P-R-O-V, CCC for Community Care Center dot org. So that's provccc dot org. Great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. That's all we have for you. You can see Mission Nonprofit on Channel 77 on Sundays at 4.30 p.m., Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m., Thursdays at 7.30 p.m., and Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. You can also catch us online at tcmedia.org. See you next time.